chairman of our World Consultative Forum, raises alarm over the insecurity and tension ahead of the forthcoming governorship elections in Kogi State. And would also address calls for the involvement of women in key position in the Tunubu Shatima administration. This is Plus Politics. I am Messi Bokbo. The chairman of Arawa Consultative Forum and president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects and Gabriel Adoku has raised alarm over the insecurity and tension ahead of the forthcoming governorship elections in Kogi State. Now he expressed concerns that the elections slated for November 11th, 2023 might not hold if violence continue unabated Given the manner innocent people have been killed outrightly and their properties been burned. Earlier this month, the Kogi uh, state government had confirmed an attack on the convoy of the governor, Yahaya Bello, by gunmen along the Abuja Lokoja Highway. Also, full scale manhunt and apprehension of notorious criminal gang in the state. While well, joining us to make sense of this in this discussion is Kingsley Fawon, Commissioner for Information, Kogi State. Thank you so much, Kingsley Fawon, for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Mercy, for having me. Good evening, viewers around the world. Well, so uh, apart from the fact that there, were, there was an attack or an attempt on the convoy of the governor, Yahaya Bello, there are also reports that um, from the leadership of the Social Democratic Party, in Kogi State, who happened to have appealed to the president to intervene in Kogi to maintain law and order. Uh, that's following the attack as well on the governorship candidate of the SDP, Yakubu Ajaka, and his supporters. So I'd like to ask you, Kinsley, can you quickly bring us to speed with what exactly is going on in Kogi State in terms of uh, security? Thank you very much. Kogi State is uh, one of the most secure states um, in the country today. Uh, we inherited a crime infested state when we came in 2016. But today, it is one of the safest because of the security architecture, the security policies and strategies of the Yahya Bello administration. So what we are saying is that despite the fact that we have having the governorship election on November 11, we will not want a situation where the gains we've recorded in terms of security will be reversed because of the political desperation of the politicians. Uh, you know, right now we are witnessing flashes of insecurity, but the state government is on top of this situation and we will ensure that we, bring, we maintain the level of security that we are witnessing in the state and as well improve on it because as the criminals try to invent new ways of uh, trying to make the state insecure, we are also up in our game to ensure that the state remains one of the safest states in Nigeria. So ignore any of these uh, reports that you uh, get. Whatever is happening here are efforts at ensuring that the lives and property of our people are not put in jeopardy because of political desperation. Okay. So I, I totally understand that uh, you are the Commissioner for Information in Kogi State, and I really don't expect a different answer from you. But if you look at... Uh, the fact that there's been a lot of tension ahead of the elections. We know that the elections will be uh, held in November, all things being equal, on the 11th, uh, to be precise, 2023, governorship elections. There seem to have been a lot of complaints, uh, up to a point where you have the chairman of the Arawa Consultative Forum and the president of the Nigerian Institute of Architecture, uh, Gabriel Adoko, who has raised the alarm over insecurity ahead of the elections. So again, categorically, apart from the fact that efforts have been made to uh, curtail all of this, what exactly are you dealing with in the state? Is it politically motivated? Are we talking about kidnapping, banditry? What exactly is going on? Yeah, we don't um, actually know. Um, let me pick it from two perspectives. We don't actually know the event uh, that, the, um, that Gabriel Aduku was talking about. Uh, whether it had to do with the operations of security operatives a few days ago, uh, which led to the 
neutralization of a notorious kidnapper, murderer, and criminal that has been declared wanted by security agents. Uh, maybe it had to do with that. I can connect that because we can we can see where the um, where the complaints, where the noise is coming from. We don't also know um, whether architect Gribel Aduku is also uh, trying to defend his candidate of choice because he was part of um, he was part of a splinter group within an ethnic um, organization that endorsed the candidate of a certain political party. And we know that supporters of that certain political party is, have been seriously um, complaining on social media because of the operations that took out the criminals a few days ago. Maybe he's trying to defend uh, his own candidate or, uh, you know, because it would be unfortunate for him to use the platform of the Iowa Consultative Forum to promote an ethnic agenda that he is known for. Kogi is um, a multi-ethnic state and the present administration in the state has done a lot to unite the people of the state. So nobody can play ethnic politics in the state again and succeed with it. So having failed to use the platform of his ethnic organization to promote his candidate, maybe he's trying to use the Iowa Consultative Forum uh, to be able to achieve his dream. But, you know, that is going to be very unfortunate. If Iowa Consultative Forum, that is um, um, having all the 19 states of the northern region of the country in it could make a Kogi person the chairman of the forum. That is a sense of fairness because Kogi is the southern part, is the most southern part of the north and the most northern part of the south. So you can see that if they could make someone from Kogi the chairman, that person should live up to the billing of ensuring political neutrality, fairness and justice and not do anything that will endanger the unity, cohesion, and togetherness of the good people of Kogi State. So he will need to make more clarifications as to what exactly he's talking about. Maybe he's still trying to promote well, well, um, his uh, candidate, or he's trying to use the platform of ACF to promote ethnic division in one of the northern states of Nigeria. Well, so, so I, I think that we'll come back to that conversation. First of all, uh, yourself and himself, who's in absentia now, but looking at some of the statement that has been made, is about Kogi State. And then at the end of the day, we're asking, is there insecurity in Kogi State? Or is just just the, you know, are we just manufacturing one of this report? Because we hear that, you know, the governor, there was an attempt on uh, the governor's convoy, Yahaya Bello. There was also an attempt on, uh, you know, on, the SDB candidates himself, of course, which he has spoken about, and all the insecurity issues. So uh, at this point, again, uh, let's be very certain. Is it that, you know, we're just making stories or are there political can, tension? Is there political tension that, right now in Kogi State? We can't refer to what happened between the SDP candidate and the convoy of the governor as a measure of insecurity. Um, it was a clash orchestrated by supporters of the SDP candidate who attacked the convoy of the governor, blocked the governor from uh, no, passing. No. So, so let me get this correctly, Kinsley. Are you saying that, you know, the attack on the uh, convoy of Yahaya Bello was orchestrated by, uh, you know, the SDP and their supporters? It, it is not about suspicion. It was, it was a clash that was in public domain. He was trying to overtake that convoy. He was blocked by a vehicle where they were keeping arms and ammunition. And then the security had to rise to the occasion to be able to take the governor off the place. Some vehicles belonging to the convoy of the governor were smashed and damaged. Shots were fired at this uh, vehicles conveying the security operatives uh, that are to secure the governor. So it is something that is in, is in the public domain. We have decided we are not going to talk extensively about it because it is a matter that is being investigated by law enforcement agents, and we know that they will um, bring their reports to the public and ensure that perpetrators are prosecuted. In other words, you are saying that the SDP is responsible for the attack on the convoy of the governor of Kogi State? 100%. All right, then. Uh, I mean, there's so much confidence in that. But again, uh, like you have said, do, do you have proofs? 
definitely. You know, it, it was a confrontation on our convoy coming from Abuja. We have proofs. We've presented all of this to... So how do you know that the, the confrontation was coming from the SDP? Because then again, uh, you know, the, the reports that we're having right here is that members of the opposition party are not allowed to breathe. And that's because the powers that be in Kogi state are intimidating and harassing the people. But then again, you are saying that the recent attack on the convoy of the people and also dismissing the fact that the SDP president, the governorship candidate was attacked. So I, let, me I, give, let me give you these scenarios. A few days ago, the candidates of a court party held a very massive program in the state, bringing all his supporters across the state. Nobody harassed that congregation. Recently, Senator Dino Milae, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, went around the state to meet with traditional rulers, to meet with interest groups. Nobody harassed his convoy or the congregation of his supporters. Also recently, the candidate of the ADC, Honorable Leke Abejide, went around to meet with royal fathers and also unveiled his deputy governor. All of this happened in Kogi State. He was not harassed. Nobody harassed him. So the report that the opposition parties have been harassed is ludicrous. It is false. Not it opposition party, specifically the SDP is saying what's that happened? their, their I mean, governorship candidate was attacked, me, as well as their let supporters. Me land, let me land on this thought. This is an isolated case. And it is a case of desperate politicians who were thinking they could harass a sitting governor in a state. An attack on the governor is an attack on the authority of the Kogi state. It is not just about the governor, it's about the people of the state. So if others are going about their campaign without, um, with, without any hindrance, without any molestation, without any harassment, why is it that it is this particular person that is complaining of harassment? Why so, so is it that the police, the state security uh, service, went on an operation to neutralize criminals who were bent on disrupting the peace of the state, and it is still the same party that was complaining about it. So you can nip it together and know where the problem is. What we are sure of is that we know that politics is not a crime, but crime cannot also be politics. That sounds so we are not going to politicize Crim criminality in the state. When you but, but, but again, I'd like to take I'd like to take you on on this particular yeah. one, Kingsley. Uh, Thank you. You, you. you have stated that because the PDP and other political parties have had their rallies and campaign without any sort of violence and whatsoever. Then again, you just assume that you know the fact that the convoy of the uh, the sitting governor Yahya Bello was attacked would have been the SDP. So were you able to identify any member of the SDP? Were you able to, you know, seize stickers? Was there really anything? I mean, because you say you, you sound very that. sure that it's the SDP that's involved. I'm not holding brief for the SDP, but I'm asking no, I'm, questions I'm now. Because from second. what you have said, it sounds like you're I'm, just it's, it's just a conspiracy no, I'm theory. Your yeah, thoughts that I'm let's just assume that the SDP would have been responsible for the attack. But then again, if you have a government, because a government has a responsibility of securing lives and properties, whether or not they belong to a certain political party or not, the complaint from your state has been that tension has actually increased ahead of the elections. And one is asking what exactly could be going on. And you have also dismissed the you know, reports coming from the SDP saying that hey, that's not true. Maybe they're turning the stories. But don't forget that they're also citizens. They're also part of the state. So again, I ask. Also, you, you, you have reports, especially coming from you, saying that at some point you understand the fact that the attacks that are coming, you know who's responsible, monarchs have been involved in insecurity and what have you in your state. So for sure, do you have evidence? Could you identify or did you identify any member of the SDP has been involved in you know, the attack on the convoy of uh, the governor of your state, Yahya Bello, who's your principal? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Messi. And I'm, not, I'm just going to answer all of the things you've said is seeking for proof. And I'm just going to answer you by saying that the tundra that blocked the governor and we found arms and ammunition in that tundra is 
there is a tundra that was branded with the colors, stickers, logo of the SDP. And also in that convoy was the governorship candidate of the SDP. All of this happened in his presence. We have video evidence to this effect. And I am repeating and reiterating emphatically to you that there is no tension whatsoever in Kogi State. Others are campaigning around the state. Even the SDP candidate has gone around the state to talk to people to campaign. He was not harassed by anybody. It was that incident of blocking the way of the governor that led to that skirmish that day. And, you know, what we are saying is that despite the fact that they don't belong to the ruling party, it is not about the party. Governor Yahaya Bello is the governor of Kogi State, governor of people that are in SDP, in APC, in S everywhere. So it is his responsibility to protect all of the people of the state. And that's exactly what the governor is doing. So I am saying emphatically, no political tension. So you're saying that there's no uh, insecurity concerns or security concerns in your state? Well, we have been uh, speaking with the Commissioner for Information in Kogi State, Kingsley uh, Fanwo. Uh, Kingsley, can you hear us? The people are going about their normal businesses. There are no issues whatsoever. I think that we lost connection for a bit, but I like that you reiterate or, you know, come again. Uh, let's talk about that. Because we're looking at the state of security in your state. And we know that for sure over time, there's been several complaints that, yeah, Kogi State used to be very peaceful. But then again, there's neighbored around almost nine states. And there might probably just be a trickle-down effect with the political tension that has been reported from different quarters, including the attempted attack or whatever that happened uh, on the convoy of the governor. Uh, there seemed to be a lot of concerns from different quarters. So I asked literally uh, to you, are you saying that there are no security threats in Kogi State, that everywhere is peaceful, no banditry issues, kidnapping, terrorists, and what have you? Kogi has been very safe. You know, in the past few years, we've put in place a security architecture that has been able to deal with the issues of security. Part of the effort was what you saw a few days ago when the um, security joint task force went after a notorious kidnapper, murderer, gun runner, and ensure that he was neutralized. When they approached the place, he opened fire on them and wanted to kill all of those security um, agents, but he was neutralized at the end of the day. So in Kogi State, we don't have we don't have warlords, we don't have criminals that are above the law. We ensure that we do everything humanly possible to encourage security agencies to be able to maintain law and order in the state. So I am saying again, Kogi is very safe. Kogi is very peaceful. Only politicians that are afraid of the past that are afraid of their fake identity, that are afraid of their fraudulent past, that are afraid of their criminal machinations. Only those, of, only those politicians are afraid of coming to Kogi State. If your hands are clean, you will come to Kogi State, regardless of your political party, to campaign and engage in your political activities. Others are doing it. Why is it just one party that is complaining bitterly? About the whole so, so, so you're saying that there's been no attack on any uh, human life, uh, properties have not been destroyed or burned whatsoever within this period, 2023? Let me give you, um, let me give you a scenario. There is no society in the world where you but, have. No, 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 you haven't on. answered my question. I'm asking: Are you saying that there's been no security or insecurity incident? However, in 2023, uh, up until January, till this moment, there's been no threat of whatsoever. That, that's, where, that's where I'm going. I cannot be boxed to a one-answer situation. What I'm saying is that there is no society where you don't have insecurity. What, what separates and distinguishes any state government is how you respond to that security threat. And we have been responding in such a very spontaneous manner in the state that the people have so much confidence in our government, 
in our security agencies, in our security architecture. So I am not saying that totally there, is, there are no flashes of insecurity here and there. Yes, we have one or two of, of those situations. But what matters most is how we have been able to deal with the situation and put it under control to ensure that our people are safe. So, but there are, there are also still concerns uh, that, uh, you know, people, uh, members of your state and people are worried about the elections that are slated for November the 11th, even though some people will stay, will still have a lot of time to November the 11th. Uh, saying that if all of this is gone on abated, then there might just be consent of not having the elections holding. So w what exactly is your government doing categorically to address all of this? There are also some points where uh, you have also stated, uh, your government has stated that you understand those who are involved in this criminal and criminality, and you're doing everything to address it. So if you know those who are involved in it, how come they have not been apprehended? With the temperatures, the political temperatures in the state. We are not going to allow that. We are going to ensure that we have a free, fair, credible, and peaceful poll on November 11. That is the commitment of the government. And we have started that. What I expect is that some of these um, so-called statesmen are supposed to come out to help security agencies for ensuring that criminals that would have disrupted the election, some of them have been taken off the stage. And what it means is that we will not allow anyone to continue to kill co-guides and kidnap co-guides and create a, a situation of tension. And mm. Kingsley, we seem to be having chaos you know, in the state. Nobody's about the law. And like I said, politics is, you can play your politics peacefully. And at the same time, crime is no politics. You cannot be involving yourself in criminality and say you are pre politics. The state will make sure that such a oh, well, well, it's it's unfortunate that the allegations that you know the powers that be uh, it's an undemocratic situation in your state. Yeah. As political opponents and other stakeholders who want to run for political offices in the state are constantly subjected to intimidation, harassment and threat. Can you please speak to this? And, and you know, when they say powers that be, uh, what powers are we referring to? Could it be the incumbent power? I, Kingsley, I can you hear me? You have to take the question again because I didn't hear. All right. Yeah, I, I, you have to take the question. Yeah. So I'll take that because uh, we're almost out of time and this will probably just be the last for us. Uh, you, you have spoken about, you know, the security situation saying it is not what we're hearing. It's a different situation whatsoever. They are probably just elements who are just trying to, uh, you know, make things uh, get out of hand. But then again, your government and yourself have been quoted for today to say, you know, what is responsible for insecurity in your state. And I'm asking, if you know those who are causing and constituting a nuisance, how come they haven't been apprehended? That's on the one hand. And then secondly, there are also complaints from different quarters saying that this current situation ahead of the elections in, in, in November 11th is undemocratic, as you have uh, powers that be not allowing a political opponents and stakeholders to run for political office as they have been subjected to intimidation, harassment. What powers are they referring to? Could it be the incumbent? Especially when you talk about contesting for political office and then having powers that be. So what exactly are we dealing with? Uh, you know, we are both, um, mostly we are both journalists. And uh, when journalists say sources that uh, do not want their names uh, mentioned, then you know... I will what, say that uh, again. It's, it's, it's the ROA well, Consultative you know, Forum. To, what I'm trying to bring out is when you say there are concerns in certain quarters, what are those quarters? Where are they? The ROA Consultative I, Forum. You, they, they, you, they're very vocal on this particular one. They have stated am, that no, their powers that be in Kogi you, State that are not allowing political opponents to contest for offices or office in the state, that they are being subjected to intimidation, harassment, and in court, powers that be. So I ask you, what powers do you think that they are referring to? Could it be the incumbent? 
I don't speak for them. Um, and I've given you the scenario of the peace that we have in the state of how political um, political candidates, candidates of political parties are going around the state to campaign peacefully without molestation, without harassment. I've told you all of this. So if they are talking about powers that be, I, I think they would have to define it um, and let us know. But I know that one of the powers that be have been neutralized by security agencies a few days ago. Maybe those are the powers that be that they are referring to. All right, uh, Kingsley, we have to go at this point. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right, then. We have been speaking with the Commissioner for Information in Kogi State. Uh, he is Kingsley Fawo uh, right there joining us. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. We'll take a break, and when we return, we'll be discussing the calls for women involvement in Tinubu Shatima's administration. Please stay with us.